Well, it was pouring rain outside again. Uh, I was just sitting down in the banana building, staring at the giant robot, thinking about stuff. And since I started, I've kind of always had this um, kind of abstract idea that it could somehow kind of be uh, supported by springs, so that it would kind of it would it would be sort of like it was anti-gravity. I mean, not from the ground, but just its legs, like they would be a spring-loaded. Um, so there wouldn't be much stress in the internal parts because the springs could be attached to static pieces on the robot and would take a lot of the stress off of uh, the moving parts. And now that I've got it big and I can look at it, I think I got some ideas. So I'm going to go start scribbling junk all over some papers and see if I can get something uh, you know, worked out. Oh, and I replaced that ball bearing that broke. Uh, I had to take one of the legs off. It was all very exciting. Not. Now, the spring-loaded situation has to like pull on the legs when they're halfway down, but not above that, because when the legs are off the ground and up in the air, I don't want like stuff pulling on them very hard, right? Um, so how can I make something that will pull harder the shorter it gets? Well, I was thinking compound bows are like that. You know, they have the funny little... Uh, Mm, pulleys that are that aren't circular they're offset so anyway uh, I like carrots <laughs> okay step one of my new ridiculous ideas is to make another set of rollers down here um, and then I'll actually also take some of the stress off the other ones because it was one of these uh, rollers that broke on one of the legs you know the ball bearing that broke ah, it's right over here some somewhere. There it is. The outside casing just snapped right in half. I'm hoping the ball bearing got weakened sometime when I was welding and got hit with heat. Uh, but just in case, you know, putting some extra rollers on will uh, strengthen that. Take some stress off those uh, top ones. Um, yeah. But this is all part of a much bigger plan to increase the efficiency of the whole operation. I should be able to double the amount of weight this thing can hold with a couple bits of trickiness. Oh, and I mean double in addition to all the reinforcements I'm going to do. So I should be able to hold a decent amount of weight. Maybe I'll even be able to get in it. We'll see. It's kind of funny because like two days ago I was ready to like just cut out some of the uh, functionality of the thing and weld a couple movable pieces in place that would, uh, you know, restrict some of its capabilities a bit. And then I realized, oh my gosh, that'd be quitting. That's stupid after all the work I put into this. I have to make it good. So, going for it. I have to say, that's quite a nice tap. Maybe the best one I've made so far. Okay, there, new set of wheels. Although it's useless if it's not, you know, secured to the top, so I'm going to take one of these ladder rungs, very useful, weld it down there and up to that part up there. Yeah. Oh, it's getting too dark for camera to see, but I got that piece on. And I got it braced in. Of course, that restricts a bit of the space in that area. So now I have to take the stupid legs off and turn it on for a second just to make sure nothing's going to collide in there. Oh, but I only have to take three pins out to disconnect the legs enough. And what is going on with this weather? It's not even five o'clock yet. It's the middle of the summer and it's getting dark already. Stupid clouds, it's been raining all week. Looks like plenty of clearance. Oh yeah, that's some precision hole marking right there. That's correct. I do sarcasm too. Unfortunately, ladder rungs that come from the junkyard often have paint all over them. So I have to get that off. I want to weld paint fumes. Breathe paint fumes. Never mind. Okay, one leg reattached with extra rollers. Yeah, those extra rollers. 
Now these extra rollers have this extra piece sticking out here so I can drill a hole through it and attach some kind of spring loaded thingy to go to the other end of the leg to pull on it. Now I have another math part. I have to figure out how to make this spring loaded thing. Uh, but I need to know how much this leg goes up and down. And I know at this part it should go down 30 centimeters from here and up 30 centimeters from here. But I need to know the distance from here, like from this to the frame at each point, at the longest and the shortest. So I'm going to disconnect this, move it down 30 centimeters, and then measure it over to there. Here's what I'm doing in a nutshell. I've got a spring attached to a leg going to a pulley to a string. Now at the shortest point, it's 136 centimeters. At the longest point, it's 150. And in the middle, it's 144. Now in the middle is when I need this to change. Um, because so I need the, the string to pull really hard down when it's 130, no wait, 150 to 144, no wait, 136 to 144. And then not pull very hard when it's between 144 and 150 centimeters. So I have to make this pulley a funny shape. Uh, yeah. So I have to go do some uh, figure. Okay, now before someone tells me that 144 isn't halfway between 136 and 150, that's not the halfway. It's something else's halfway, and the 144 is that measurement when the important thing is at halfway. <sighs> well, you know, it's raining again, and thunderstorms are on their way, so I'm going to go somewhere and play with some pencils and paper. Oh, I always cut myself off. That last word was paper. This stuff. And by playing, I mean figuring out some pulley shapes and stuff. Let's watch some of those videos on my uh, camera real quick. And it does not capture the grayness of the sky.